Hey everybody, here we are at Eagle River Polaris Arctic Cat for another edition of AK Sled Shed. Welcome everybody, it's Mike Buck with AK Sled Shed. I'm really excited today because we have Chris Oles here with us to uh, talk about the Iron Dog a little bit and some of the equipment that he uses and takes with him when he's out there on the snow. Uh, he's really been great the last few years, helping out with a lot of safety classes around the state and sharing information. So first of all, I want to talk to you, Chris, a little bit about the uh, the Iron Dog. Yeah. So how many years have you ridden? Uh, about 20 years. I, my first year was in 2000. Uh, in 2000. Wow. So, yeah. So quite a few. So uh, and last year obviously was a great year. Yeah, last year we got last year we got second. The two years prior to that we we, we won. So I've got four wins. I've got I can't remember. I've got I, I don't remember my stats, but n numerous top five finishes. So yeah, yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's the most grueling snow machine race in the world. Mm -hmm. So. To be a champion of, of that uh, race is, is pretty amazing. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sure over 20 years of, of doing that race, you, you've learned a lot. A few, picked up okay. a few things, yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. appreciate like, you uh, yeah. coming in and, and sharing some of that information with us yeah, today. Absolutely. Glad so to we're going to we're gonna do three little uh, film sessions. We're going to talk about uh, your MacGyver kit, what you yeah. take as far as tools and, and equipment to repair your machine mm -hmm. out there on the trail. And then uh, we want to talk about head protection, what you use you know, for helmet, face protection, and warmth that way. Yep. And then we're going to talk about clothes. As Perfect. Well. OK, Chris, so your okay. MacGyver kit, what, kind of, <laughs> what kind of stuff are you taking to fix your machine when, you, when things go bad? Yeah, so I've got uh, you know, multiple things that, uh, that we carry. Um, some people actually are pretty surprised at how essentially little it is but you know really the I think at the end of the day what you're trying to do is try and be efficient with what you're carrying um, things that have multiple purposes uh, you know tools and stuff like that every machine's a little bit different so of course kind of what I'm carrying you're gonna have to you know think about what your machine you know different brands different uh, um, you know I've, I've kind of built my toolkit based on scenarios that I've I've been in over the years and so Every year, kind of, you know, it would grow or subtract based on the, the type of sled and stuff that we're using. But um, so, would you suggest that people like go through their machine and figure out, you know, what size wrench do I need to do yeah. certain jobs? Or, For sure. And maybe use their kit when they do um, repairs on their machine in their own garage to make sure they have everything they're going to need. Well, I think that's that's a big part of, uh, you know, a big part of knowing. Um, what you're going to need is when you're actually working on the machine itself. I mean, you know, Mike and I build our sleds pretty much from the ground up for the race. And so we're very familiar with what tools we're using on a regular basis. So, uh, you know, and if you're not, obviously not everybody's tearing their machine down like we're doing. But, you know, you know, get your wrenches and your, you know, if it's torque bits and uh, pliers and stuff. I mean, obviously you can go through your sled and kind of figure out what, what you're going to need for it you know what does it take to maybe take out a skid to take off a ski those are a little bit bigger wrenches and you know make sure that you maybe have that with you but i guess first we'll kind of talk about the actual tools that i carry uh number one i carry in my pocket a leatherman like all the time i mean it's just a handy you know whether you need a knife or pliers or a screwdriver it's it is always on you um you know, so it just makes it easy. It's just something that I've always, I've gotten in the, the habit of just carrying. My actual tool kit, this is, I mean, this has kind of been my standard tool kit that I just always take with me. And, you know, in, in the race, I might supplement it with a couple other tools that I put in my pocket that I'm going to be getting in and out of. But really, this is the same tools that are in here. It just makes it a little bit easier. Or if I have a, if I need to double up or something like that. And where do you carry that kit on your machine? So I, I actually put it, I have like a nose cone bag that I put it in. Um, and it actually goes in there and I keep it down in there tight and it's it's always in there. Does it stay dry? It, pretty dry. Yeah, and that nose cone bag's fairly, the one that we have is fairly, um, you know, it, it stays for the most part pretty dry. Sometimes I'll, I'll carry it in my, um, in the upper console, but it puts a lot of weight on the hood, so to have it down in the belly pan if possible. I notice my tools when I take them out of my bag, they end up getting pretty 
pretty rusty. Well, you'll so you'll see clean mine. <laughs> you'll you'll see here. that you'll see right now. You can see the rust on mine. I, I didn't get to do a very good job of putting stuff away last year, and, and uh, it was definitely wet when I did it. Just a crescent wrench, a smaller. It's a crescent wrench. You know, it's just obviously it's a multiple wrench that you know. Again, if you're not carrying every single size with you, you can not always, but a lot of times, um, a lot of times get you know get work with it. Um, you know, I've got a couple ratchet wrenches. Uh, something that has, has been invaluable for me is a is a magnet. You know, it's it's very easy when it's cold out. You know, and your hands are cold, trying to like get a bolt off, and you drop it down in the hood or something. But a retractable magnet doesn't weigh very much, and it's just it could it could definitely save your day. But I, I love these these uh, you know these ratcheting type wrenches. They're easy to get on and acts like a um, you know, like a ratchet. Uh, speaking of that, I've got this this one here that actually turns basically turns this into an actual like a uh, a ratchet. So it actually has a um, for drivers. Yeah, for drivers. So you yeah. it actually you can put the the tip for for a quarter inch socket, and then you can have a couple you know a couple sockets that we carry to be able to get the front end apart and stuff like that. I so, noticed those have swivels on them. So they, they do. Swivel angles. Yep, so you can get into some kind of some, you know, uh, goofy places as opposed to just a standard. Like exhaust bolts. And that yeah. Kind of mm -hmm. <laughs> and I even, speaking of exhaust, I, I've, I've, for the longest time, I've carried that actual spring tool uh, just because, and, and again, this is super light, doesn't doesn't weigh a lot, but when you need to get it off, you know, either use a some sort of a, maybe a vice grip or you know these are really handy there's a couple spots that this is really hard, tricky to try and get a spring off so um, you know having that it just uh, um, another thing that I've really uh, have kind of come over the years the probably one of the things that have gotten me out of a lot of scenarios is kind of moving to the actual besides the tools and again I've got some other tools some bigger wrenches that don't fit in my pouch uh, again some you know for some of the bigger uh, some of the bigger stuff I've got these that I keep in here now one thing that that I've used these for is these have actually doubled up as my a-arm repair kit so I used oh, to care I used to carry like little uh, pieces of angle iron yeah. and cut them down and some people still do you can clamp them to like a running board or your rear bumper um, but again like two decent sized wrenches like this uh, I'm always carrying a bunch of hose clamps. Uh, you know, I'll probably have a, a half, like when, I, when we're out in the middle of nowhere, having like a half dozen of these things makes a, I mean, I've have, this has gotten me out of a bind, so many different binds between clamping these to, uh, it, you know, uh, you know, upper and, 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 you know, in an angle like this, so you can actually sandwich it together and kind of patch something together. Um, it's been huge. We've even used like a, another thing that I can tell you in, in the actual race one time I lost a bogey wheel and so the axle kept wanting to slide out. I was able to just get a um, hose clamp, put it on the axle, tighten it down so it wouldn't, you know, yeah. again, it just, it saved, it saved the day. Yeah. So, you know, another thing, tie, tie wire, you know, again, it's just invaluable if you, if you have something you need to, to try and clamp or strap or, you know, the, this is a stop leak. I carry some small, uh, like little, uh, like a almost like a roofing screw, um, and a couple different sizes. Some really, really small ones, and some bigger ones with some rubber washers. And so, if you end up like say, you know, we're, we're running studs in our. If you run, if you if you put a stud up in your cooler, and you lose your coolant, you're able to actually put that screw in there. And you really? can plug, yeah, you can plug it off. A roofing screw. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yeah. a great tip. Yeah. And there's a, and there's a, like I said, I usually get a couple different sizes. So depending on what size the hole is, uh, you know, I can just get some of these, and then um, you know, little self starter screws or a, a right. even like a self tapping, but like a you know one different sizes with right. some different size rubber washers that will fit on there, and you can okay. put them in there. Um, I like that too. Yep. The other one that I and I didn't bring it with me is I is I get a little tube of this that's that that uh, metal that metal putty. Um, it's a uh, um, you know, it's kind of like a JB weld, but it's just a, it's in a little cylinder and once you mash it together, it has an inner, you know, it's a two part, two right. component, um, right. uh, metal. Yeah. And we have used that. I've used that multiple times. Um, I actually had a, a, 
a suspension had come apart one time and it actually poked a hole in my chain case and so I lost all the, the oil in my chain case and I was able to actually knead that together we roughed it up cleaned it up really good stuck it on there and it you know it's like a it's like a five minute like a five minute putty and you know half hour later we were down going down the trail so uh, but I carry you know some miscellaneous stuff like a shock retainer um, I over the years you know not so much in the last I probably haven't used one in eight years, although I think I, I lent one to somebody here, uh, you know, maybe a couple years ago. Um, but it just comes handy, and you can use it as some sort of a spacer if you need to. Again, it's all about using something that you could, you know, have multiple functions instead of just one. Um, and then nuts and bolts. I just, I carry a, a variety of, you know, washers, nuts and bolts. Uh, you know, some of these really big... Um, and have you chose those because they fit specific? Correct. So I'm, I'm your again knowing knowing my machine pretty well. We kind of know what you know. There's really there's there's not that many different size bolts on the machine. So sometimes if you can get a little bit, say a longer one with it's fully threaded, so you're not having to worry about just getting you know one that's uh, you know one size fits all, so to speak, instead of having five different bolts that could potentially work. And again, having multiple washers that you could. Maybe stack them up if there's if it's too long for what you're using. Um, again, and this thing's kind of stuck in here, but uh, these like a couple big flat washers. These, you know, I've used these multiple times to. Again, if it's something that you may, might not have the right, maybe they're not. You don't have the right bolt, but you've got a combination of, of bolts and nuts and big washers that can hold something together. It makes a you know, it makes a huge difference on the difference of maybe getting home instead of walking home. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> as far as parts go, we don't really carry much in, in, in extra parts, both in the race and even when we go out. It's uh, these new machines are just so reliable. I mean, they're just we just don't see the, the issues that we did 20 years ago and even 15 years ago. It's just uh, you know we're able to you know go out further and you know riding a 500 mile day anymore it's, it's not a big deal out in the middle of nowhere you don't feel as uh, intimidated as we used to cause we, right. you know. so how about uh things like zip ties duct yep. tape rope yep and so um, uh a couple things that um you know i typically carry some duct tape uh i actually typically carry like a full roll on my machine um, but I carry this in my pocket, you know, I basically just get some duct tape and make a little nice little tight, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of room, you know, again, you don't want, don't want to get too bulky where you don't, you don't want to take anything because it's heavy and, um, but something like this, I mean, this doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you have a little bit of tape to tape something together, it's, it's, it's huge. Uh, another thing that I do carry besides the, uh, duct tape is I always carry electrical tape with me. Um, it's. It's just the, the, the properties of electrical tape is just totally different than duct tape. So if you need something that you can you can have to stretch and use it, whether it's for gloves or you know something on the handlebar or grips or it, it just is another really really handy. So I, I actually carry electrical tape in my pocket with me all the time. There's always electrical tape with me. As a matter of fact, I have it, but I keep it yeah. keeps it warm. Always. Yep. So exactly. And it's stretchy. And you, and yep. Ready to go. And if you need it, you can, it's 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 available. You know, rope, I didn't bring every kind of rope that I carry, but just rope in general, just, you know, not only to, if you have to tow yourself out, but uh, I'm sure you're going to go through some segments with some self-rescue and stuff like that. But uh, as far as an actual maintenance in, or it's just maintenance, it, repair, uh, you know, you rip off a front end, uh, you breaks, you know, break, you know, it, it almost doesn't matter. Even just trying to hold hoods together, uh, having some rope I carry some of that paracord uh, I always have uh, I have like a little uh, kit that I carry in my handlebar bag I carry like a full you know like a full wrapped up one that I have uh, it just you could use it for tying stuff down tying your front end we've had to tie front ends together multiple times and you can you know tie your spindles up and, and it, it's it's actually pretty amazing how good of a job uh, you can do with rope between the duct tape the rope and you know, uh, something else to, to consider carrying is like a ratchet strap or a couple ratchet straps. Uh, again, those are things that, um, 
we've used over the years. Uh, I don't necessarily, I haven't always carried them, but if, if one's available, we'll use it, especially like I'm talking about like fixing a front end or patching a front end for the, to get you out of somewhere. Um, it's, again, it's invaluable with, you know, it just gives you that leverage. But again, you could do some of the same tricks with a rope. So we just carry rope and, and um, but if you had if you have the room you know something to consider even uh, um you know some of the like the motorcycle tie down straps work really good uh, bungee is another one um, not only is it great for holding some of our stuff down on our machines again you 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 you've flipped your machine over and the hood just comes apart and you still want some protection and you, you're able to get a bungee and hold stuff down um, again to get you out uh, you know, even for you know, even even for using it for the front end and stuff, we've we've done that before. So, you know. awesome. Well, thanks, Chris. We yeah, appreciate uh, you showing us your your gear, and uh, we'll uh, we'll go on to another segment here. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah.